Hi, I'm Poncho Sanchez. Welcome to the fundamentals of Latin music for the rhythm section. We're going to start today first with the congas. This is a set of conga drums. I have a super tumba here, a tumba, and a conga. As you can see, the tumbas are larger than the conga drum, larger uh, in around than the conga drum. You tune them also lower. Uh, remember that I'm a right-hander, so what I'm teaching you is for a right-hander. If you're a left-hander, it's exactly the opposite way uh, to set up the drums and to play. The super tumba is tuned to E, the tumba is G, and the conga is C. E, G, C. The proper way to hold the drums is you have the conga drum, you tilt it towards the tumba, and you hold the drum between your legs here. Down at the bottom, you hold it between your feet very firmly and the upper part of the drum with your legs. That way you have full control if you want to tilt the drum just a little more or if you want to raise the drum up to get uh, a different sound out of the drum. So this is the proper way to set up the drums for a right-hander. Now, the first pattern that we played, the mambo, the three-point shuffle, uh, is the basic tumbao pattern on the conga drums. I refer the mambo pattern to a three-point shuffle. Some of the sounds that you're going to have to get out of the drum are the slap, and you notice I slap it with the right hand, I leave the hand on the drum, the right hand, also holding the skin down with my left hand. The open tone, lift your left hand off the drum, and you hit the drum twice with the open tone with the right hand. You can see where I hit the drum with the right hand on in the center of my palm of my hand, open tone, lift off the drum for the open tone. Slap, you hold down with the left hand and hold right hand down after slapping. So you got the slap and the open tone. Now, with the left hand, you're going to have to pivot from the heel of your left hand to the tips of your fingers on your left hand, which would be heel, tip, slap, tip, heel, tip, and then two open tones with the right hand. So again, it's with the left hand is heel, tip, right hand, slap, left hand is tip, heel, Tip, right hand, two open tones. Now this is what it sounds like with the clave, the two, three clave. And this, of course, is in four, four time. One, two, one, two, three, four. That's the sound of the conga drum. And now we're going to add the tumba drum to the three-point shuffle rhythm which now makes it a two-bar phrase when you add the tumba dora to it. One, two, one, two, three, four. Notice when I played the tumba, it was on the three side of the clave. And no matter what clave you're playing, it's always on the three side of the clave. And now we're going to move over to the bongos. And this is Sal Vasquez on bongos, and Sal will explain to you a little bit more about the bongos. As you can see, the bongos are a lot smaller than the congas, so naturally you tune them much higher than the conga. And you also position 
the bongos the same way you position the congas with the lower one on your right side and the higher one on your left side. So the first thing on the bongos is you're going to play more with the tips of your fingers as opposed to the whole hand like on the conga. And, and with your left hand, you're also going to use your thumb and this, the meaty part of your hand here, close to the thumb. And in holding the bongos, they're in between your legs. I have no stand. They're just positioned between my knees here with my calf, resting on my calves, the top of my calves. So the first pattern that you play is the martillo. And like I said, it's with the tips of your fingers. And this hand's alternating, your left hand's alternating between your thumb and the tip of your fingers, like this. So that's the martillo, and now we'll show how that fits with the conga. One, two, one, two, three, four. The next thing on the bongos is the repicando, which is improvising off of the martillo, and we'll demonstrate that for you now. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now the bongo player not only plays the bongos, he plays la campana, the bongo bell. And the basic pattern for the bell is this. I'm a right-hander, so the bell sits in my left hand. And when I hit the mouth of the bell, I lift these fingers to let it ring. And then I, I mute it and hit back here for a higher pitch sound. So there's two alternating sounds. And with the clave, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So the bell is played during the higher dynamics of the song. And now we're going to go to the timbales. And this is George Ortiz on timbales. And George will explain a little more about the timbales to you. The timbales I have here today are made up of a steel metal shell. 14 inch on the right, which is a high drum. 15 inch on the left, which is a low drum. The timbales consist of three, two bells and one clave. The mambo bell, the cha-cha bell, and a clave. I have a right cymbal for some solos and two crashes for color. During the lower dynamic sections of the song, I played the gascara, which is the outer shell of the drum. I will demonstrate it now. One, two, one, two, three. My left hand was playing a muted and an open tone on the left, on two and four, which matches the tumbao of the conga. During the higher dynamic sections of the song, I played the mambo bell. I'll play it for you now, in two, three clave. One, two, one, two, three.
you notice, I'm doing, I'm pivoting on two and four with that same pattern as I did with the cascara. I also play the same pattern at times on the cymbal. And now, Boncho, Sal, and I will demonstrate very traditional mambo pattern, and we, we could see the relationship between the mambo bell, the bongo bell, what I'm playing on my left hand, and Boncho's tumbao. One, two, one, two, three. And now we're going to move over to the bass, and this is Rene Camacho on bass, and Rene will explain a little bit more about the bass. Thank you, Poncho. Uh, this last tune that we just finished playing was a, a mambo, and um, uh, basically what uh, the bass functions as in the mambo is um, kind of the bridge between uh, the percussion and uh, the harmony section, and a um, little bit of history about the bass. Uh, it kind of comes into this style of music from the old uh, marimbola uh, instrument, which is kind of like from the kalimba family of, of uh, the African instruments, kind of a box with um, uh, some uh, steel strips that you uh, pluck and gives off the tone out of the acoustics from the box. And uh, so from that instrument, uh, we brought in the acoustic bass, which uh, is kind of like from the European family of instruments. And um, its, uh, its first objective was to kind of uh, give the sound of a percussion instrument as well as the harmonic side. And uh, so now in the modern music, this is pretty much what the bass functions as. And uh, what we do is uh, what we call a tumbao. And what the tumbao is, is, is the groove that we're playing, which uh, as, as you were hearing our, our groove now, uh, I start the beginning of the tune on beat one, and uh, from then on, it's kind of um, syncopated uh, on beats uh, the end of two and beat four. So uh, I'm going to uh, do an example real quick with the clave, and this is kind of what it sounds like. One, two, one, two, three, four. So I started on beat one, everything after that is on the end of two, and four. Okay, and this is pretty much played throughout. Here we go. Okay, so that's the basic tumbao of the mambo groove. Okay, now uh, there's certain sections within the song where you can um, use ornamentations, use different notes within the scale or the key of the song. Uh, and I'm going to uh, do an example with David on piano and the clave as well, okay? And this is kind of um, me taking liberties, you know, within the key. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, uh. So as you hear it, taking liberties harmonically as well as rhythmically. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so that's the basic function of the bass within the mambo groove. And now we're going to move over to the piano. And this is David Torres on piano. And David will explain a little bit more about the piano to you. Thanks, Poncho. Uh, the pattern I played on the mambo is a two-bar vamp. And that vamp is called the montuno. And there's many, many variations on the Montuno. And I played uh, one of the basic ones. Uh, if you noticed, on uh, each section that uh, the soloist played on, I changed the Montuno. For instance, the first uh, Montuno went like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> The second soloist had a different montuno. One, two, three, four. And then the third.
third soloist was a timbales, had this uh, uh, montuno. One, two, three, four. <laughs> soloists had their own vamp and uh, what I did for the bass I comped and that's comes that comes from the jazz world and the comp uh, comes from the word uh, company the C-O-M-P and what I did on that was I played uh, um, chords that fill in the harmonic uh, uh, changes so listen to what I'm playing here one two three four <laughs> comp uh, comes sometimes uh, when a horn soloist wants to play more of a jazz feel instead of playing a montuno I'll play this and it gives it more of a jazz feel but once again you have to be careful and make sure that it fits with the clave now these montunos that I'm playing evolved from an instrument called the tres it's a, a form of a Cuban guitar, and Sal Vasquez is going to demonstrate that sound, and you'll hear where the piano uh, montunos came from originally, uh, came from the tres, and they're called guajeos. This is the basic tumbao that I played through the cha-cha-cha in a 2-3 clave. And it sounds like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. This here is a widow, it's a type of gourd, it comes from the squash family, it grows on the ground and you cut off the top 
and you hollow it out, dry it out, you carve grooves on the side of it, and it's played with a stick. And now there are also plastic weedles, because these break very easily. And there is also a metal weedle, which is called a weeda, which is played like for changui or the merengue. And the weedle for the cha-cha-cha is probably the most important thing for the cha-cha-cha. It, it really keeps the time and is the distinct timekeeper and gives the distinct sound of the cha-cha-cha. Now the weedle sounds like this. One, two, three, four. At the beginning of this tune, we had the piano and the guido play for four bars. I play what is called an abanico. I'll demonstrate it now. Now that, I play to bring in the band, and I typically play that to bring the band into different sections as well. For this tune, I played a standard pattern on the cha-cha bell, which is, consists of all quarter notes. I'll demonstrate it now. One, two, one, two. Okay, so for uh, this tune, uh, I played a, another basic bass tumbao, but this was a cha-cha-cha tumbao. Uh, with, there's a couple subtle differences, um, basically a little more uh, rhythmic in the bass pattern uh, on this style, okay? And um, the first style, or the first groove that I played, um, which was in the A section or the melody section, uh, is the typical cha-cha pattern, which I will play for you now. One. Two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that was from the A section of the tune. The next section, which uh, was the solo section, is... Um, uh, the section that, that I played, uh, what we call the masacote, okay, and it sounds something like this with percussion. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that was the second section during the solo. Now, I'm going to play eight bars of the A section with eight bars of the Masakota section or the solo section with piano and percussion. Sounds something like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. The pattern that I played on the, the cha-cha is a traditional montuno, and it goes like this, one, two, three, four. On the second part, where the masacote went, I played uh, a different pattern, and the pattern goes like this, and if you'll notice, my left hand is playing the upbeat, and it's a little more uh, rhythmically propulsive. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah.
This is the merengue pattern, and I'm going to play the merengue pattern on the tumbadora. The, the actual merengue pattern comes from the Dominican Republic from a little drum called the tambora. You play the tambora with a stick, and you play it on your lap. It's a two-headed drum. I'm going to demonstrate the merengue to you now. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now Sal will demonstrate the conga part that matches the merengue part that I played on the tumba. Sal will demonstrate the conga pattern, which is two sla slaps and two open tones. And now we'll play both pa patterns together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Traditionally, in merengue, they don't use timbales. Uh, merengue is played in cut time. Uh, for this, for this, uh, for this session, I've, I'm playing half notes on the cha-cha bell, and what I'm doing is I'm playing a muffled note and an open note on the drum, on the lower drum here. So the muffled note is on the of of one, the open note is on the an of two. Show you how it sounds. One, two, one, two. On the second part of the merengue, the pampichao, I've played a rhythm called Mozambique. Pay close attention to my left hand. It's a, the rhythm's going to be a little more syncopated, and I'm playing an open note on the last 16th note of one. And I'll show you how it goes. One, two, one, two. Is slightly different, even though it's still called a tumbao, it's slightly different from your traditional mambo and cha-cha tumbaos. Okay, um, uh, during the first part of the song, um, pretty much doing the same type of uh, pattern as Georgie was doing on the bell, kind of half note, uh, ostinato pattern, uh, although these are staccato notes, um, as you'll hear in the example. And then when Georgie changed to the Mozambique, 
I changed to a, a different tumbao, which uh, emphasized beat one a little more to give it a little more motion, uh, or a little more energy, kind of uh, on top of the beat. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play eight bars of the first style, eight bars of the second style with timbales. Sounds something like this. One, two, two, two. For the Pampi Chao section of the merengue, this is what I played. Uh, I'm going to play uh, the last part of the melody into the Pampi Chao. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six.
This next rhythm is an Afro-Cuban 6-8 rhythm in the 6-8 time signature. This is the African influence in our music, in Latin music. What I played was in 6-8 time, and I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now for the 6-8 number that we played, I'm playing the shekere, which is another type of gourd, uh, similar to the wido. All it is is just uh, a bigger gourd. And it's the same thing, you cut off the tops and hollow it out and dry it out. But instead of carving in grooves, you have beads on it now. And, and this has two tones. It has the tone that I get from the bottom, which sounds like this. And it has the sound of the beads. Now the pattern I play incorporates both of those and it lines up with the bell pattern that Georgie's gonna play. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now Georgie's playing a 6-8 bell pattern and notice that there are hits that he's playing that match with my hits here. And Georgie's also pivoting with his left hand, hitting um, pulse, pulse beats with open and, and muffled tones. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So now for the 6-8 uh, tune that, that we just played, um, David and I are going to demonstrate um, the styles that we're playing. Uh, for the piano, uh, David is, is pretty much comping uh, the same way he would for, for a jazz tune, um, but still playing in, in 6 as, uh, as the bass. And I'm playing uh, another ostinato pattern which consists of six quarter notes uh, and taking a few liberties here and there rhythmically. Uh, and it sounds something like this. One, two, three, four. Hope you enjoyed the DVD, and I hope it helps you out in your musical future. And we'll see you all out on the road. Thank you very much. One, two.